Chapter 12 Winters are very cold in Chicago. Sometimes it's hard to even want to leave the house. It was so cold on Christmas that we just stayed home. Plus, Mom had to work some on Christmas Eve. Luckily, New Year's Day isn't too cold. Mom decided we should do something special and celebrate it in Wisconsin Dells. Even though we have trees near our house, I never see as many trees as when we're in Wisconsin. The woods are so pretty, and there are so many winter activities, more than we could ever do in Chicago. Also, I'm very happy to get away. I don't want to think about the presentation or school. Don't you want to go to Jamaica instead? I suggest to Mom. Jamaica is much farther away, I think. Mom just laughs. <laughs> I wish, she says. How about when you become a famous explorer or artist? We'll go. As I imagine deep sea diving, or better yet, my artwork on display in a museum, I feel okay about not going to Jamaica quite yet. Our favorite activity in Wisconsin Dells is snowshoeing, so we go the moment we arrive. First, you have to wear these shoes that look like gigantic tennis rackets. They help you trek across the snow and also make you look sort of funny when you're walking. We look like penguins, Mom says as we waddle in our snowshoes. I think we look like humpback whales because we're puffy from our clothes, I say. No, we look like spies, says Nick. Except that if this were a spy movie, we would wear all white and we'd be running away from the bad guys who wear all black, I say. Mom shakes her head. If you were wearing all white, I couldn't see you. I want to be able to see my niños. Because no shoes are heavy, Mom and Nick are able to walk much faster than I can. After a while, I fall behind. Hey, slow down, I say panting. Sorry, slowpoke, Nick calls back. I groan. He turns around to look at me. You better walk faster, too. Everyone knows that Bigfoot lives here. He especially likes to eat little girls. You're lying. He's not real. I stomp my foot. Then I take a quick glance around. It's eerily quiet. Come on, let's go. Walk a little faster, Stella. There's so much to do today, Mom says. Nick likes to scare me sometimes. He told me once when we were going swimming that there were alligators in the lake. It scared me so much I couldn't go in the water for the rest of the day. When we got home, I researched alligators. Turns out there are no alligators in Illinois. When I showed Nick the website, he just shrugged and said, You never know. Now I'm pretty sure that Bigfoot isn't real, but I can hear branches moving. It's probably just the wind, but I'm going to double check when I get home. I yell, Mom, and run to catch up with them. I keep up, but after a while I start feeling tired. Looking out for Bigfoot and wearing snowshoes is exhausting. Nick, can you carry me? He squats down and I jump on his back. I'm only doing this because we look bigger and more intimidating to Bigfoot, he says. I can't see his face, but I know his secret smirk is there. I giggle and hug his neck a little tighter. It's hard to stay mad at Nick for too long. Stella, we're almost to the car, Mom says, patting Nick's head. We'll grab lunch, and then we'll have more fun. During the car ride, I noticed some little huts on the lake. These are for the ice fishers. Seeing them reminds me of my school project about ocean life. I haven't told Mom or Nick about the new presentation part of the project. I don't want to think them to think that I can't do it or handle it. I think Nick would make fun of me, and Mom has enough problems with work. I don't want to make her worry when she doesn't have to. Are you thinking about your project? Mom asks. She can magically tell what I'm thinking without me telling her. Yep, I say quietly. Mom? Yes, Stella? Do you ever get nervous talking in front of large crowds? No, why? She replies. I sigh. That's not what I was hoping to hear. Just curious. Really, never? She pauses. Not really. Your abuela was a performer. I was just used to seeing that. Her response doesn't make me feel better. In fact, I feel a little worse. Thankfully, Nick says, Oh, good. There's the restaurant. After a hot lunch, we walk around downtown. 
Even though it's New Year's, the streets are still covered in Christmas decorations of snowflakes, reindeer, and snowmen. I start to wonder how we would celebrate the holidays in Mexico. I can't picture Mexico City in snow. I'm also pretty sure a snowman would just melt there. So I ask, Mom, what did you do for Christmas in Mexico? Nothing like this. It's too warm there. We celebrated with our family and friends. Actually, Three Kings Day is kind of a bigger deal in Mexico than Christmas for kids. Really? I've never heard of it, says Nick. It's fun. You leave your shoes out and the three wise men leave you presents overnight. Can we do that next year? I ask. Nick says, yeah, I want more presents. Well, we live in the States. I just didn't think to do it. I wanted you guys to fit in. I sigh. I think to myself, but I don't fit in, Mom. I'm different from the people in my class. I'm an alien. Suddenly, I picture Poncho swimming alone in his fish tank. He can't be around other fish, but he also can't live outside of the water. He doesn't belong anywhere, either. Chapter 13 Ring, ring. It's Dad! yells Nick after he answers the phone. I run over. Really? I whisper. It's January, and we just spoke to him on Christmas. He usually never calls this soon after Christmas. Nick nods and covers the phone. He's going to be in Chicago in a couple of months for work. He also wants to know whether we got our Christmas presents. Our Christmas presents this year were more gloves and socks from Tio's store. Big surprise. Also, like usual, they look nothing like we'd ever wear, like nothing we'd ever wear, and they don't fit right. I put my ear to the phone and listen with Nick. Yes, we got our presents, says Nick. Good. Gotta make sure my ninos are warm, then Dad says. You know I'd do anything for you guys. Nick rolls his eyes. Good thing we're not on a video. When school starts back up after winter break, it's so cold we actually end up using some of the new gloves and socks. Sadly, Jenny's not there. She has a cold, which means I have to eat lunch without her, and it's a little scary. I'm not really friends with anyone else, so I'm not sure where to sit. At lunchtime, I look around the cafeteria. My options are slim. I also know that I can't eat anywhere near Jessica. I scan the room, looking from table to table, searching for a friendly face. When I finally spot Lauren, who's reading another Nancy Drew book. Yes, I think. When I walk over, Lauren makes room for me without e my even asking. I nod my head. This will be good, I think. We both like being quiet. To my surprise, though, Lauren's pretty chatty today. She asks, How's your ocean life project? It's good, I say. My drawings do look good. It's the presentation I'm worried about. I pause and look at Lauren. She looks so excited, like she has a secret she wants to share. So I ask her, how's your project? I've been trying to ask more questions, as Jenny suggested. It's working some, especially with Lauren. She leans, leans in. Well, my project's great. Don't tell anyone, but I'm going to bring in my uncle's parrot for the presentation. Miss Bell said it was okay. She sits up a little taller. That's really cool. She nods. Lauren looks so proud. I don't mean to, but I frown for a split second. I don't know how Miss Bell could have agreed to this. It's simply not fair. A parrot can talk and sing. That's like presenting with a partner whom you know everyone will like. What am I going to do? I can't bring Poncho. I love him, but he doesn't talk. Most people would get bored just watching him swim. Maybe I can be like the wizard in The Wizard of Oz and do my whole presentation from behind a curtain. Recess is much harder than lunch without Jenny. It's too cold to be outside, so recess is in the gym. It feels lonelier there because everyone is closer together than we would be on the playground. When Jenny's not there on a warm day, I can just hide underneath the slide. I decide to bring my notebook and pen to recess. I'm determined to figure out my presentation. So I sit on the bleachers and open the notebook to a blank page. I write presentation on top in big letters. I underline it three times. I think, then think, and think. Nada. Nothing. Frustrated, I close the notebook. 
As I start looking around the gym, I see Jessica playing jump rope with a few of the girls. It looks fun, but I feel too shy to ask to play. Plus, I don't want to deal with Jessica. Unfortunately, Jessica notices that I'm looking. She curls her lips. Stella stares is staring. Maybe she's stupid, says Bridget. I bunch my fingers into little fists by my sides. When I hear the word stupid, I can feel my heart pounding like drums in my chest. I feel hot, roja with anger. People can say I'm strange or different, but I am not stupid. I stand up without thinking and say in a loud voice, I'M NOT STUPID! Jessica's eyes get big for a second. She looks surprised, even a little nervous, but that only lasts a moment. Bridget starts laughing, and Jessica joins her. Thankfully, Stanley walks over with Ben and asks them if they want to play tag. Do you want to play, Stella? Stanley asks, turning to me. That's okay, Stanley, I say quietly as I sit back down. If he'd asked if I wanted to play hide-and-seek, I might have said yes. I am a really good hider, and today feels like a good hiding day. When I get home, I lie on the rug in the living room. Feeling alone is very tiring. I wish I could just move back to Mexico. Then I realize I wouldn't have been able to defend myself there like I did today. I would have just replied in English to some mean kid who was speaking Spanish. At least Jessica understood me. That's it. As soon as mom gets home, I'm going to ask exactly how to say I'm not stupid in Spanish. Nick walks over to the computer and sits down and turns it on. Rough day at school? He asks as he starts to play a video game. I sit next to him. Nick? Yup, he says. He's staring at the computer screen so it feels easier to talk to him. Did you know we're aliens? He gets quiet. He pauses the game and looks at me. You know, that's not like aliens in outer space. You're not E.T. I know that, but it still means we're different. Okay, yeah, it sounds bad, but it's really not. He opens a new window on the computer and types. Then he points to the screen. It's a very official government-looking website. See? Here's the definition. Alien is an individual who is not a U.S. citizen or U.S. national. I bite my lip and nod, seeing that that didn't really help. Nick gets another idea and types something else on the keyboard. A new window pops up. Look, the word alien is derived from Latin word analis, which means stranger or foreign. I look at him. That doesn't make me feel better. Okay, so we're aliens, but you're not a weirdo. You're my sister, mi hermana. But then, why do kids at school say I'm weird? Today, one of them even said I was stupid, which is not the truth. I cross my arm. Nick's face looks sad. I never really told him before that kids make fun of me sometimes. Sis, you're not stupid. You're the coolest, smartest, almost nine-year-old I know. You're just saying that, I say, looking at the ground. No, I'm not, he says, lifting up my chin. Plus, so-called aliens, he says, putting air quotes around aliens, are some of the smartest people. Albert Einstein was an alien. He was from Germany. He's pretty smart and cool, right? I nod. Jenny's mom is an alien. I nod again. That's true. And if she hadn't moved here, I might never have met Jenny, which would have been terrible. Plus, I'm an alien and I'm the coolest, right? He says, putting his hand on his chest. I move my hand side to side. So, so. Nick laughs and continues. Aliens are just people from different places, and different places can be awesome. Can you imagine if we were born here? If we weren't Mexican? Mom wouldn't know how to make albendigas. I gasp. I hadn't considered that. Or worse, we just call them meatballs instead, and they would be boring meatballs sin sabor. That makes me feel a little better. I like it when Nick listens to me. Still, I can't help but feeling scared thinking about the presentation. What's the frown about? He asks. Nick is being so understanding that I just blurted out. 
I have to do a presentation with my fish project. I have to speak for a whole five minutes in front of the class. I'm nervous. I confess, dropping my head into my hands. I remember the first time I had to do that. It was scary. I look up. I can't even picture Nick being nervous. He's so good at school presentations. Once I saw him do a debate in front of the whole school. I have no idea what to do, I say, scratching my head. Well, first of all, we'll practice, I sigh. Yeah, I know, it sounds silly, but it helps. Then he pauses for a good minute. And maybe Mom can take us to the Shed Aquarium. The Shed Aquarium? Nick is the smartest. We've never been, but I've always wanted to go. It's all the way in downtown Chicago. It was the largest aquarium in the world for the longest time. I throw my arms around him. All right, all right, he says, hugging me back. I can see the small smirk on his face. It's all good. We can do some research and get some ideas for your presentation. Yes, I exclaim. And don't worry, I'll help you, sis, he says. Then he nudges me. He puts two fingers above his head like antennas. We aliens gotta stick together. Chapter 14 Stella, sit over here! I hear Jenny calling me from across the cafeteria. I walk over with my tray, and as I get closer, I can see Anna is there, sitting next to Jenny. My hand starts to shake, which makes my chocolate pudding jiggle on the tray. I sit down next to Jenny. Anna waves hello. Thanks for letting me sit with you guys, says Anna. My best friend Isabel is sick today. I usually eat with her. She pouts a little bit. I quietly let out a sigh of relief. Yes, Anna has her own best friend. No problem. It's hard to eat lunch without your best friend, I say, smiling as I shove a chicken tender into my mouth. Thanks, Stella. Can I trade you an ant on a log for a chicken tender? Anna holds up a piece of celery with peanut butter and raisins. Sure, I reply. We exchange grins as we trade food. Any person who's willing to share food with me can be my friend. The more we talk, the more I can see why Jenny is friends with Anna. She has a cat, a goldfish, and is pretty funny. I can actually picture us eating lunch together again, maybe even with Isabel. Do you guys have your Valentine's Day cards ready for tomorrow? asks Jenny. I do. Anna nods. I can't wait for the class party. I tighten my lips. Almost. I'll finish them tonight. Usually, I would have finished them by now, but selecting Valentine's Day cards this year has been tricky. Mom makes me give Valentine's to all the kids in my class, even the ones I don't like. With most kids, I can give them something simple like Happy Valentine's Day. That works for Jessica, who I have to give one to. But I don't know which card to choose for Stanley. Happy Valentine's Day would be boring. I also can't choose Be My Valentine card. No way could I do the Will You Be Mine card. When I get home from school, I finally choose You're the Coolest for Stanley because it's the truth. I also spend a lot of time writing out his name nicely. I hope when he reads it, he'll realize that I'm normal and not weird. Then things will get better in class. We might even be friends. While I write everyone else's names on their envelopes, Nick watches Jaws on television. I'm helping you research your project, he says. Some help. I have to hide behind the couch for most of the movie. Out of all the sea creatures, I'm most afraid of Great White Shark. People say they don't attack humans that often, but after watching the movie, I'm not sure. Jaws, the Great White Shark in the movie, really seemed to like attacking people. The next day, I bring the cards for my classmates with me. There are balloons and hearts decorating the entire classroom. I spy Mom in the corner, hanging up a streamer. Mom always takes a break from work to help out with parties as the classroom mom. I love her being there. She makes it a little easier, since she is so friendly and gets to know all the kids. Also, Mom is chatty enough for the two of us, so I follow her everywhere as she walks around the room. I'm busy eating a cupcake when I see Mom talking to Stanley. I've never told her about Stanley. He just cut his hair short, and it looks super soft. Mom says to him, I love your haircut. My son Nick just cut his hair like that. Do you mind if I touch your hair? It looks like a teddy bear. Stanley just grins and says, 
Yes, ma'am. Mom pets his head. Yup, just like a teddy bear. They both laugh and Stanley turns a little roja. I'm surprised. I didn't think Stanley could ever get embarrassed. Then I hear Jessica whisper in my ear. Are you hiding behind your mommy? I turn around. My own face, roja. Mom turns around too. Apparently, Jessica wasn't quiet enough. Mom stands up extra tall and says, Yes, I'm Stella's mother. Nice to meet you. Jessica drops her mouth open and her face goes blank. She's been caught in the act. I beam. Yes, this is my mom. Unhappy that she can't say anything else to me, Jessica huffs, puffs, and walks away. Having mom around is the greatest. After the Valentine's Day party, mom drives us home. The radio starts playing my favorite song. I open my mouth to sing, but she lowers the music. You know, Stella, someone can only make you feel bad if you let them. It's just words. I can see her eyes looking at me in the rearview mirror. She looks worried, and I hate making her worry. I hope that she would never find out. It doesn't feel like it's just words. Plus, you're lucky. Everyone likes you. Not everyone likes me. I just decided I wasn't going to let it affect me as much. It'll work for you too, I promise. I look out the window. At the stoplight, I feel her hand reaching back to me. I grab onto it tight. It makes me feel safe. You're so much stronger than you realize. That's why your full name is Astrea. You're my star. You can light up the dark. You promise you aren't lying? I look into her eyes in the rearview mirror. She looks right back at me and says, Promise. Thanks, Mom. I don't 100% believe her, but Mom never lies.